and welcome to Best of Three, your weekly fighting game talk show brought to you by Dot Esports. Efren's off this week, uh, and I don't exactly know why, but uh, we're going to bring you today the show exactly how you've come to know it uh, with the panel, including your illustrious guests, uh, John Velasco Rotter Guerrero from Event Hubs and Steve Ace King Offsuit Jurek here from Dot Esports. And then we're going to talk to Julio Fuentes coming off his uh, ECT win this past weekend about, you know, winning the tournament, his first tournament win with Echo Fox, and uh, Chun-Li and et cetera that happened over the weekend. So how are you two doing? I am doing fantastic. How about you guys? You sound extra, extra fantastic. Like there's something that's uh, really hyping it up for you. Um, everything's happening, man. Everything. Is it because Efren isn't here? Are you super happy about that? I- you know, I just feel so free. I, I, I feel so amazing. That guy's such an impressive host, right? It sucks. With I'm so glad that Mike's here. Thanks, Mike. Be- because there was so much debate about who was the worst player here. Now <laughs> that he's gone, I have that title to myself. And I can, just, I can just be free. And some you say so you may free. have had a connection to R. Kappa in the past. And I know your guys' boy just won uh, first attack. I, I can't take any credit for that. Except that I'm going to get jump in into the self congratulations. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, after jumping into that, you want to give us a CPT recap, Steve? Let's do it. Um, another incredibly packed weekend of action going on. Um, this is a stretch of 13 events in 17 days. It's ridiculous. Uh, it started out in uh, Chengdu, China, with Z Fighting Game Championship. This was when we were supposed to start seeing a full weekend of Asian dominance. Uh, didn't quite see that. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but this one was taken by Xiao Hai over Shen in the grand final. Um, what was interesting here is Shen rocked with Kami pretty much the entire tournament and then switched over to Ibuki for the grand finals was able to take the first set and reset the bracket, but then lost uh, to Xiao Hai's Cami in a thriller. So shout outs to Xiao Hai. Uh, he does qualify for the Asian final, even though he's already got a spot in Capcom Cup. Uh, you see Gamer B got third there. He continues his great run of play. Uh, that's his third straight uh, top three finish. So good weekend for him. Then we move over to the European continent, uh, Celtic Throwdown, going down in Ireland. Uh, that one was taken by a guy who we've seen in the in the leaderboards, in the standings quite a bit, but never saw him at the top. Luffy finally getting his first win of the year over Pax, which was a great performance for Pax. He's easily his best. Uh, Genius third, again, his best. Uh you also see, he's not on the screen, but K. Brad got ninth. Uh, with that, he becomes the first player in the world to get points in all four regions. So, shout outs to K. Brad going the World Warrior out. Then we went to Puerto Rico, the shining star of the Caribbean, for first attack. Uh, that was where most of the North American talent was. Uh, you had Knuckle Dew out there. You had Ricky. You had Flash. You had Alex Valle, LPN, Chris G. Whole bunch of names coming out. But it was an all Japan final. Uh, Goichi ended up falling to the story of the weekend. John Takeuchi. This is a guy who got sponsored by R. Kappa after they saw him in the Topanga Charity League. Uh, Amazing Rashid play. He's just 18 years old. This was his first international tournament. And you'd think maybe he caves to nerves. Maybe, you know, he doesn't play as well as he did. He ended up not only winning, but styling, you know. He had some great combos. He had a couple of couple of those. Uh, so it was a great well, weekend for him. I hate to interrupt you on this, but I actually heard a recount that he really was very nervous early on in the weekend. People were saying that he was losing in casuals. To, to you know, random players and stuff was happening, but that he really came onto his own throughout the weekend. So shout outs to that guy. But please yeah. continue on. And he got a little a little alcohol in him that might have calmed him <laughs> down, which is legal. Eighteen is legal for alcohol out in Puerto Rico. Uh, and then we went to East Coast Throwdown, uh, run by uh, our boy 
L I Joe. I can talk. I swear. Uh, <laughs> this one, we saw plenty of Daigo through the weekend. He hosted a Q and A session. He hosted a. He was part of a five on one exhibition, which he won. But if you pull up the standings, you don't see him here. Uh, he ended up getting knocked out. By our second and third place finishers, Ludd and Ray Ray, respectively. But it was Julio who ended up taking it all in the grand final with that ridiculous Ken. Uh, Ludovic did qualify for the regional final since Julio had already earned a spot earlier this season. And that should bring us to... The bracket, uh, if we can take a look at the updated uh, challenge bracket for if Capcom Cup was today, I'm going to put that link in the chat. No changes in, no major changes in the top half of the bracket. Uh, Infiltration still obviously the number one seed by a lot. Uh, you do have Shao Hai moving up a little bit. But if you look at the bottom half, the one big change this weekend. You see Goichi in there. He knocked, with his second place finish, he knocked Yukadon out of qualifying position in the global standings. So if Capcom Cup was today, Yukadon would not be part of the field. So it's it's getting tight for those last few spots. Now, now a question I have regarding this bracket is how do they choose which regional qualifier plays what seed is that just random because i see infiltration playing the asia regional qualifier which seems like it'd be quite a tough first match well here's here's how i have it um obviously we don't know who the regional qualifiers are going to be but we do know that whoever gets that spot is going to be someone who's not in via points or via excuse me or someone who moves up the standings if that final gets taken. So all if you look at the bracket, all four of the top four seeds are playing um, regional finalists. The order doesn't matter so much. It's going to come down to whichever whoever has the most points. So those spots are guaranteed aren't guaranteed to have any points, whereas the people who uh, get in via the global uh, the global premieres, excuse me, they're guaranteed at least two fifty six for winning. So that's why I have them where they're at right now. All right. And are we moving on to winners and losers at this point? Yes, let's do that. Uh, my biggest winner of the week has to be Luffy. Um, this was a guy who has come so close so many times this year. He had eight top 16 appearances in European events. That was more than any other player, yet he wasn't getting those wins. He only got a couple of second and third place finishes. So he wasn't really a threat in the standings. Now he's in, or now he's very much in the hunt uh, for both a global spot and for a European spot. So he's got two shots to get in big weekend for him. Also got to put gamer B in the winner's column. Uh, like I said earlier, this was his third event in a row where he got top three. Um, He's been playing really, really well over the last few weeks. You, you hear the phrase getting hot at the right time. That might be Gamer B right now. Um, he's seventh in the Asian standings, but the top four players in that list right now, or four of those top seven, are likely to get in via the global leaderboard. So that takes them out of the hunt. There's still he's right in the thick of that race. You know, if he had like 30, 40 more points, he would be in the field right now. Uh, and then John Takauchi, the biggest story of the weekend. Um, like I said, 18 years old, first international tournament, the pressure of showing up being sponsored in a foreign country. You know, you would expect a player like that to crack, but he just, he threw it down and he beat Goichi. You know, he didn't have a cakewalk. He had to beat Flash, he had to beat Christy, and he had to beat Goichi, one of the best Chun-Li's in the world. Uh, so he performed incredibly well, and he's going to be a threat in that uh, North American final. <coughs> Excuse me. Is that the last winner? That's Those are my three winners. Uh, my biggest loser this week has to be the Asian continent. And it seems kind of weird, but hear me out. 
You look at uh, what happened at Z Fighting Game Championship. That was won by Xiao Hai, who was already in the field. And the runner-up was, uh, was, excuse me, Shen, who was already in the field. No one outside of Gamer B really helped themselves there. Um, Goichi, obviously second place performance at first attack was impressive. It really helped him, but it didn't get him all the way into the Capcom field yet. Um, I feel at 375 to 380, that's going to be the cutoff for global qualification. He's not there yet, so he's still got some work to do. Uh, second loser is the leaders of the European standings, and I'm talking about CCL, uh, Problem X, and Mr. Crimson. CCL got fifth at uh, Celtic Throwdown. Problem X and Mr. Crimson got ninth. None of those guys really helped themselves tremendously. But not only that, uh, Luffy winning puts him right in the hunt. And none of those four players are in the global uh, qualification spots right now. So you're really looking at those four fighting for two spots in Capcom Cup right now. So unless they start getting those bigger results, you might see a couple of those players who we thought were, who have been playing great at various points throughout the season, not in San Francisco in December. Um, but my biggest loser this week has to be predictability. Um, we were talking about how Daigo last week, greatest player in the world right now. He's getting hot, ends up getting knocked out by uh, Ludd and Ray Ray. You know, we were talking about Chun being perhaps the most powerful character in the game, but he just lost, she just lost a tournament uh, grand final to Rashid. We've been talking about, oh, Luffy's washed up, he's done. And then he wins an event finally. So just when you think you've got this game figured out, another week of action throws everything you knew into the trash. And, and so and, at that point, uh, you, you wouldn't call Daigo himself a loser. Well, obviously he didn't perform as well as he obviously would like to, but I feel like what he's done over the last three weeks three weeks has put him in the Capcom cup field. So even though he didn't help himself, he's at worst still in the field. So I, I, uh, I can't put him in the loser column. If Steve's not going to do it, can, can I call Daigo a loser? You can call Daigo Go for a loser. It. <laughs> I feel that, uh, okay. Daigo's great. I'm a Daigo fanboy. <clears throat> all that. Yes. But, uh, what the crap? <laughs> Here's a guy that plays MOV. that plays, um, Sako that plays, uh, who's the other one I'm missing right now? Uh, Goichi. Goichi, on the regular, trains with these guys, beats them up, makes them look dumb sometimes, and then he goes uh, to America and loses to Lud and Ray Ray. Now, Lud and Ray Ray, great players. Ray Ray, especially over in, um, in Marvel vs. Capcom, very much known for that. Uh, these guys know how to play fighting games, but this is Daigo in Street Fighter. Uh, how, how does that happen? Like, like, yes, everyone has a bad day here and there, but... Uh, the expectations for Daigo, uh, that, they're pretty high. And for him to just suddenly kind of like slip up here like this, uh, I'm, I'm, I would call him a loser right now. Now, you were and, saying uh, that yeah. Daigo had previously said Ryu was the best character in the game, and now he's changed his mind. Yeah, we did a story on that. that I mean, this was back in, I think it was May of this year. He said um, something to the effect of Ryu is the best in the game by far, dot, 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 even better than Chun-Li. <laughs> now, again, yes, uh, this was a few months back. The game changes, the game evolves, people uh, develop new tech and such. But he said that on his, on his weekly stream. And now, during his Q&A session um, over at, was it DCT, right? Yep. He, he's explicitly said, no, I think Chun-Li is the best character in the game. Now, me may have just lost the two Chun-Li's kind of back to back. That might have something to do with it. There's no debating that Chun-Li is one of the best for sure. But is she the absolute best? I, I don't think so. And I think that uh, Daigo may be kind of like, you know, copying, copying out here a little bit. Be, copying out here a little bit, I should say. Because, uh, because he lost to him. His list in general was a little bit interesting. Uh, he left Nash out of his top six which is a character that people were putting, you know, top two or three pretty consistently and obviously won Evo. So I, I'm wondering if, yeah, that opinion came after losing. He actually did have a close call with Goichi at the well-played cup that he barely eked through, or whether that's something he's believed for a little while now for sure. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, but yeah, like I, I just feel like uh, Daigo should have been performing at a little bit higher level, knowing what he's been practicing against, who he's been practicing against, who he is, and his abilities in this game. Um, like Steve said, recently regarded as potentially the best player in the world right now, but then we see something like this, and we go, ah, well, I'm not too sure anymore. But um, I, I did want to talk a little bit about whether or not Chun Li is the best character in the game, and I know. Uh, like you said, that you feel like she absolutely is. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I definitely do think Chun-Li is the best character in the game right now. Um, you can get into a lot of specifics about that. Uh, right now, I just feel like she outclasses characters in a way that is difficult for most low tiers, mid tiers to handle, and then maintains an even matchup spread among the top tiers. Uh, when asked, Goichi actually said, I think Vae tweeted it out, that Goichi claims that Chun-Li has no disadvantaged matchups. There's no bad matchups, right? <laughs> Which to me it, is, I, how could you not be the best character in the game if you don't lose to anybody, right? Because at that yeah. point, you're beating all the low tiers, you're at least going even with the top tiers. There's no character that could really possibly be above you because the top tier matchups are what really matter. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, I'm encroaching on John's territory, but if you look at the Event Hub's tier list... Uh, which is voted on by the public. Chun Li, zero bad matchups, zero even matchups, twenty favorable matchups out of twenty. Mm -hmm. So I, I I think that says something. You know, obviously that isn't an absolute. Got you shouldn't take that for gospel truth. But if everyone thinks she has no bad matchups. Maybe she might be number one. And Maybe. I believe she's right up there in terms of uh, Capcom Cup points as well. I'm not sure if you have stats on that, but I think I've heard that Chun-Li has the most Capcom Cup points. You might. She might. I haven't been tracking that, but who has, has uh, is uh, Bavo BBR. Uh, if you follow him on Twitter, he's got tremendous stats. He also tweets out uh, from at SRK Rankings. So that is certainly someone to follow uh for that info. And, and I'd like to talk more about Chun-Li in a bit when we when we go into our block grab segment. But before that, I think the, the bigger news of the weekend wasn't the top tiers, but the battle of the mid tiers. I mean, Rashid won a major. And at this point, I mean, Rashid's a character who early on in the game's life was considered possibly low tier, one of the worst characters in the game, and has slowly kind of moved up and people have realized, oh, he's pretty good, he's pretty good. But I don't think anyone really expected this. And you were saying that uh, you, you kind of expect him to get nervous, Steve. Yeah, you know, not just so much because he's playing Rashid, but like I said, the, the circumstances around the entire tournament. Uh, this is an 18-year-old kid. Um, who just, I, I don't want to say he came out of nowhere, but he wasn't exactly well known in the West, at least, until what he did at uh, uh, Topanga Charity Cup. So he got sponsored, and you think that he's feeling all this pressure. Oh, I have to perform. Um, I have to do well. I've got so many people counting on me. Um, it's a tournament where he's get, placing a plenty of experienced uh, players, new environment. You would think everything would tell you that he would crack at some point, that he would falter and just not do well. But the way he played on Saturday and especially Sunday, um, I know Goichi reset the bracket on him, but you know, there's, there's no shame in losing a set to Goichi. He's one of the best in the world. So incredible, incredible performance all the, all the way around. And I think it's pretty interesting, too, uh, specifically attributing the, to Takauchi and not Rashid, that he's a younger player coming up. And we haven't really seen that in America in a little while now. Knuckle Dew's obviously a younger player, but he's been at the top of Street Fighter 4 for a while before coming into Street Fighter 5. And so I was thinking about discussing the fact that whether or not younger players could come up in America's infrastructure versus in Japan's and how you all feel about that. Well, we, we've seen a handful of youngins um, in, uh, in America, right, with, with Filipino Man, with uh, Chris T. Those guys are just now turning 21, and, and they, had, uh, they, they got onto the map and onto the radar a, a couple of years ago with their play. Filipino Man getting really far in EVO, winning tournaments here, and then now Chris T. was doing well in four um, and is now doing exceptionally well in five. Julio's fairly young. I think he's around like 25 or so, but... Um, 
uh, we, we've had, you know, a, a handful of players that are, you know, like below the age of 20 just come out of nowhere and, and wreck a house. I, off the top of my head, I can't tell you anyone from, from other countries that has had that much success at that young of an age. I wonder if you guys, if you guys well, can. Mr. Crimson's either 18 or 19. Uh, Akainu, who's been coming up the last couple months, I want to say he's 20. I might be wrong on that. Um, but especially Europe, there's quite a few coming up at uh, that 18, 19, 20. Sonic Fox for a while, um, you know, just not specifically Street Fighter, but in general, he's been kicking everybody's ass. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if it's necessarily a not American thing. I think it might just be not at this moment in time in Street Fighter V thing. Could be. There's also, um, I think he's like 15 or so, this guy at Wednesday Night Fights, right? Uh, is that Tatsu... I I don't know if you guys know him off the top of your head, but he's a Dawson player. Tatsu Shoryu. Fight. Shoryu, yes, Tatsu Shoryu. And, uh, I mean, he's not necessarily winning stuff quite yet, but uh, when I was there visiting, the talk of the town was, oh, this guy, you got to watch out for him. He's, he's, he's doing really well, and especially for a 15-year-old. He's got that a little, a little bit more mature of an approach to the game. So um, it, it's exciting to see these younger guys growing up and being able to, uh, to take it to the, uh, the older crowd. I, I, I'm i going to get killed for this, and I'm already getting killed for in chat. Uh, I forgot to mention Phenom. He's like 19. Uh, Big Bird, a couple other the Middle East guys. So, yeah, there's plenty of young players coming up, more than I can mention. Please forgive me for not mentioning everybody. <laughs> and, and then the last thing on the, uh, the topic of Takauchi I want to discuss was, you know, the update that was posted apparently from him where he said that, if people, if Shan's able to win a major with Fang, then he should be able to do it with Rashid, and that Chun Li's, you know, not a huge problem for him, and that he shouldn't worry about tears. So uh, leading into that, I think we have a block grab. And we probably have oh. a grab too. Maybe, maybe not. So, so this week's cool blocker if... grab is going to be <laughs> on whether or not a character is overpowered and or broken. And we've selected this panel, a group of mostly Street Fighter characters, to talk about whether or not, you know, as spectators, as players, as students of the game, who is too good. And I think we'll start off with this game, SF5 Chun, block or grab. And I will, of course, go last. So, Steve. Uh, you know what? I don't think that... Look, she's obviously one of the strongest characters of the game. I, I would say she's the strongest character in the game. Is she so strong that she's untouchable? No. Um, I think, honestly, a lot of the reason why that talk has bubbled up over the last couple of days is because not only just Daigo losing, but who he lost to. You know, he, he didn't lose to Goichi and Ricky Ortiz, the established names. He lost to Ludd, who is an amazing player. He's made top 32 at EVO for the last two out of the last three years. And he lost to Ray Ray, who, you know, didn't necessarily make his name in Street Fighter, but he got runner up at EVO in a game. And you can't do that if you're not a really good fighting game player. But because they're not established names, then obviously they're fraudulent. Obviously, they're just writing the character. And obviously, that character is OP. I don't buy it. She's very strong, but I don't think she's so strong that she just overwhelms the entire cast and leaves them with no choice. So I'm going to block. In, in terms of Street Fighter V, I think that uh, it's not perfect. No, of course not. But the, uh, the difference between the, the strongest characters and the weakest characters is not as vast as we've seen in most other fighting games. So, yeah, like Chun-Li is one of the best. By no means does she break the game. Um, and uh, if anyone, if I had a problem with any character, it would actually be Ryu. And that's a different conversation for a different day. But uh, even there, I don't even think I would say that he's make, he's making the game, he's breaking the game, he's making it uh, unplayable or not fun or driving people away from it. So, no, I, I wouldn't say that she's a, a problem on that level by any means. So, so for, for myself personally, this is kind of an interesting one. I come from a world of much more broken games, of Blaze Blue where we had Kokonoe who 
didn't just beat every character. She ate to every character and stuff like that. Um, what stands out to me about Chun-Li is that I think she's a very uninteresting top tier character. I think the way she beats characters is by being purely better than them in aspects of the game. She has amazing footsie, she has amazing anti-air, she has a reversal, she has a three-frame jab, she has the fastest V-reversal in the game, she has a dive kick essentially, she has good jump-ins, she has good damage, she can convert off her jab, which no one else can do. I think that she's a character that was somewhat misdesigned and came out early. So if we're talking about a character being broken, I have to block. But if we're talking about a character I really don't like, I'll grab. In terms of well, okay, so but like, is the question? Oh, well, go ahead. Uh, the question, I guess, let's edit it a little bit because I think that most of these characters aren't truly broken. It's it's whether or not they're broken one, and whether or not you think they're good or bad for the game. Okay, that's that's fair. So like, are they ruining the game? Are they people? ruining the game? And I'll block on that too. I don't think Chun Li is ruining the game. Yeah. So and I. I have block I hesitantly block nah, why, why hesitantly because you know we're not quite at the point of third strike where it's the entire match is get meter whiff low forward and then hopefully confirm into super r- rinse and repeat but you know we're getting to a point where we're getting close to that um, I, not necessarily really close, but we're getting closer than I would like. So I, I, I don't think we're there yet, but I, if the game stays as is for the next four years or so, I think we will get there. Well, no, and, and we're probably going to hit some kind of a balance patch, um, you know, after Capcom Cup. We'll see what happens there, and that's all speculation at this point. But uh, if there's a problem with Chun, I bet you just a little tweak here, a little, slight little tweak is going to make it just fine if it's even a problem right now. So... I, I have faith. I, I, I agree with that. Um, and so we'll move on to the next character. We'll go back one edition of Street Fighter. And let's talk about Ultra SF4's Elena. Steve? That bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I have to grab, you know, just as a stream monster, you don't know. Or hopefully, if you are new to Street Fighter with Street Fighter Five. Be grateful that you did not have to go through Healing Mania 2015. My God, you know, I I don't think she was overpowered in terms of gameplay to the point of being broken. But it was like you're talking about with Chun. The way she was strong was just so boring, so defensive, you know, crouching, crouching short into spin scythe into healing. That was her entire game, you know, you know, couple, couple low light kicks. And then the, is the EX overhead coming after one, two or three, you know, it was just very repetitive, very boring to watch as a spectator. So in that instance, I would grab. Yeah. um, With Elena, she was one of those characters that kind of took you out of the game and, and it's, I hesitate to say that if a character takes you out of the game and, and, and kind of deviates from the whole rest of the cast, that they're, they're wrong. Um, because you look at a, a character like Dalson, who's widely different than everybody else in almost every Street Fighter um, that he's ever been in. And I don't consider Dalson, although very different, to be um, ruining Street Fighter by any means. But Elena, like with, with the reach that she had on her short, that wasn't something that anybody else had. And the conversion that she would get from that was was silly. Um, and so you sit here and and you've played Street Fighter Four for you know six years or whatever, and then all of a sudden they drop this character that changes it up so much um, that that she was one. Yes, she wasn't fun to play against. I don't think she was that fun to play. I didn't play her myself, but um, she was there to win tournaments or to help you get through ridiculous matchups. Um, but yes, yeah, she wasn't fun to watch. She took you as a competitor out of the game in, in ways that were that didn't feel rewarding to to win. It was rewarding to beat her because you get to hear her scream and squeal. But the path that you would have to take as a competitive player to beat Elena, the adjustments you would have to make, or the guesses you would have to make, the lame play style you'd have to go to, that wasn't that wasn't fun, um, and it didn't feel very rewarding to uh, to to do. So in that respect, yeah, she ruined she ruined the game in a lot of ways, and for that, I would have to uh, I guess grab. 
right? Is that appropriate? That, that's a grab. Yeah, that's uh, a grab. So, so this is funny because I, to me, it's almost the opposite of Chun Li for me, where I feel like Elena was such a weird character that it inspired just these like genius or maybe the opposite of genius uh, moments out of the game. I mean, who doesn't remember the healing bonanza of, of Gamer B at Evo? Mm -hmm. Or just in general, the counter picks that went to Elena later on in tournaments. I thought, as someone who didn't play SF4 as much as I play SF5 or as much as I played Marvel back in the day, she was a kind of funny final boss character for the game. And as we saw in Capcom Cup towards the end, I think only Gamer B picked her in Capcom Cup at that point, despite the fact that five or six people had her as a sub character. Well, she he got she got picked by. Um... Not, it was either RB or one of the Chinese players uh, who went up against Snake Eyes, and Snake Eyes ended up winning that match for no good reason. So, so regardless of the fact that she was clearly a very strong character and clearly a very lame character, I actually don't think her results really changed the course of the game or that five more years of the game would have turned it into a Lena Fest. I just think that she was very strange and i'm sure if i played street fighter 4 i would have blocked and i would have grabbed but i will personally block on elena because i liked watching her as someone who did not love street fighter 4 <laughs> um and so another street fighter 4 character let's talk about ae yoon <laughs> i think john has a strong opinion on this one that like all, again that bitch uh they, <laughs> there's the argument that um that when fighting games come out with brand new characters um, after the fact, like DLC characters, that they make them overpowered to get people to play them and such. Uh, and A.E. Young, at least in the Street Fighter series, was, I think, by far the best example of that. Um, I don't know that they necessarily made him good to make sure that people play the game. It's kind of a different model than you would with, like, you know, League of Legends and such. But we knew that character was stupid before he dropped. As soon as we got the information on him, we're like, uh, but winter is coming. A.E. Young is coming, and like we're all just like it's it's going to be GGs. That character is just going to destroy everything. And and you can get into the details of his uh, his lunge punch and the hitbox and the fact that it was like a free get in, um, the amount of damage output, the dive kick, the the height restrictions, um, and that's just all you know rattled off the top of my head. You can get into more detail if you want, but that was an example of a character being so strong that. It was it wasn't fun to play against them. It was just stupid, and um, you had to guess your way out of his of his ridiculous offense. And again, he really took away that competitive element of the game. It was just here comes AE Yun doing his thing. Oh, did it work? Cool. Did it not? Well, just do it again until it does. And um, at the end of the day, like sure, it might be fun to do some stylish Canadian combos and blow everybody up. But ultimately, they, it, I think that he was kind of what he brought to the game was a hot fire that was going to burn out quick. And um, thank goodness that they that they nerfed him the way they did and make him um, more relevant to or, or more relatively balanced. Um, because I think he could have, if he stayed that way, he would have broken the game down and destroyed it. And either you would have had to ban him from tournaments or you would have had to just like bye-bye Street Fighter 4. So uh, I guess I say all that to say uh, grab for sure. I have to say, you, you weren't sure if they made it intentionally or not. They absolutely made it intentional. Uh, I'm going to throw this link in the chat. Uh, ono admits that they made the new characters for AE powerful you know, to create, to make like this sort of boss feeling for them. And Yun was clearly the bossiest of the boss. <laughs> bossiest of the bosses. I, uh, the most boss. Let's he was the that. man. Yeah, he, he was, man. he was the man. Um, I'm going to grab on that. Uh, I'm going to have to grab too. Uh, I remember today, someone at the Daily Dot actually asked me to help uh, come up with reasons that Yun was overpowered for a video and the only thing I could think of was, where do I start? I mean, that character got a page worth of nerfs and remained top tier or at least high tier in the, the rest of the Street Fighter games in both AE 2012 and then in Ultra. He was a very, very strong character. Uh, in a game where comboing into Ultra was pretty difficult, he had a plus on block move that could do it. He could get in easily from full screen. They had to like cut his palm hitbox in a quarter. 
I mean, it, it it's pretty obvious that he was the best character in that game and in a very destructive way where many, many, many of his matchups were barely matchups at all. So I'll have to also grab on AE Yoon. Probably the best character in, well, that's not true. I think Vanilla Street Fighter 4 had a couple characters people didn't realize were that good, but definitely the best after the developed game. Um, and then the last one I had on this list was Nakaruru. And I know neither of you are as much of KOF players, but I'm wondering if you have opinions on this. I certainly do. Well, uh, yeah, I have, I have something to say about it. And, you know, I, I, um, I haven't delved into this game all that much, but um, I, I do have kind of an outsider's opinion and a general fighting game um, player's opinion on this, given how young KOF 14 is. Now, the, uh, the general consensus is that this character is ridiculously overpowered, right? That she's like just breaking the game down. Yeah, that is definitely the consensus. Yeah, and 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 I hear you, and I then say, okay, that may be true to an extent, but I bet you, I bet you, it's not as true as people are feeling it is right now, and people are hyping it up. If you remember, um, right when Marvel vs. Capcom three came out, everyone was like, Sentinel, Sentinel, you're so good, look at him. And it took like a, maybe like a week or two, Justin Wong comes out with a video that says, hey, everyone, after you're done crying about Sentinel, uh, check this video out. Here are his weaknesses. Here are things you can do um, specifically. I think it was as Wolverine to get around him. And, you know, yeah, it was a good character, but by no means did he, did he stick around to being like the best, anything like that. And I think that this is very, very well could be, only time will tell, a situation where people lose their minds because they find out someone has a good move, and then later you realize, oh, you can block a DP. It's not as amazing as you think, and you can punish for full, you know, for full combo. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what we figure out with this character. Now, maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong, and maybe she's amazing, and she will be, and she'll break King of Fighters, but um, that's just, that's what I would say, having experienced things like this before, um, and again, only time will tell. Uh, so I'm going to, without knowing the game that much, I'm going to block. Steve, I, I know you have a special guest. I, I, let me introduce you to River here. Um, I, I, there's my point. I was going to have River try Mama Hama. Mama Hama, I can't even talk. He doesn't want to do anything. If you can make a bird do anything on command... You're obviously way too strong for real life, so I, I'm going to grab. You know, I'm definitely a proponent of, of testing characters out and, and seeing what you can do against them. And I don't know that the character would be the only viable character in competitive play, but I'm not sure I've seen moves and frame data as skewed as Nakaruru's. I mean, for people who aren't in the know... Her rush punches, her dive kicks, they're mostly plus if spaced correctly. And her dragon punch of sorts is a safe move where she jumps onto the bird and then gets to do a plus on block dive kick. It honestly, and, and the game has a bit of this trend, looks like it wasn't really tested in any way whatsoever. And it's the kind of character where you really wonder if there is an answer. And there's definitely been plenty of videos coming out saying, you know, look, like, this could potentially be what you do here, this could be what you do here, but tournament results have been pretty skewed in Nakaru's favor so far after a week or two. Um, I definitely think she's without question the best character in the game, and I do believe she'll probably get nerfed. So will we get to see her ruin the game? Probably not, but I definitely think she's broken, so I'm going to grab on that. Now, let me ask you this. We're we've, we're only a couple ga or a couple weeks into the life of KOF. Do you think that there's an answer on the horizon where it's just okay? We haven't truly figured out what's really really good, so we've got some really good stuff here, but we don't know. We don't know if there's something better. Do you think there might be something better it's, if it's, we let this game rock possible. for a couple months? Because, you know, they just found out the other day that Kula has a glitch where she can throw an EX fireball out of her jump without doing... So she, she has a move where she spins and kicks and then throws a fireball. And people found out that if you jump and do the second part of the motion, she gets the fireball without the kick and she gets the EX version for free. So this is a game where kind of anything might go, and yes, it may go the way of Marvel 2 where we find a hundred glitches that make Nakaru look like nothing. 
I'm of the opinion that right now it may be a good idea for them to aggressively patch this stuff out before it becomes something they can't handle. But I also wouldn't necessarily mind seeing it, you know, turn into the craziness that was Marvel 2 or potentially something along those lines. Now, do you think that approach would be too close to what NRS did with uh, Mortal Kombat? You know, that's I've been a pretty heavy proponent against what NRS has done so far. But I think this may be a special case. I think there's like 20 things that have been complained about in this game. And if they were to patch Nakaru, everyone would be happy anyway, regardless of the other 19. So that's just my personal opinion right now. I know John's chomping at the bit to say something right now. Uh, well, it was actually just a little bit ago when we were talking um, specifically about Naki. Um, I, I just wanted to, again, draw attention to the idea. Like, look at the numbers. You got a 50-character roster. It's week two. Um, the thing that you think is ridiculously broken probably isn't, like, as bad as you feel it is. Um, so, again, just, like, a recap of, of when you look at history, when you look at the numbers, like, give it a minute. Give it a minute to sit, give it a minute to settle. As far as the glitches and things like that go, um, I think that uh, you either want to take the game in that direction, like you said, let it become like an MVC2, or you don't, and they need to make that call right now and then just stick to that path. So whatever they choose, I'm fine with it. Just, just go all the way with it. And with that, I think we're probably going to have to wrap up this block grab unless either of you have a shout-out to a character that you truly despise. Or Online that you Blanca, think Street Fighter good. 4. Online Blanca in Street Fighter 4 is John's best character of all time. That's what he has said. Yes. With costume 2. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, you have to add that one in there. And the on the fire stage. The costume that they nerfed. <laughs> the on costume the... that they nerfed. <laughs> um, I got to give shout-outs to... The one, the only, the untouchable, Ivan Ooze. And which oh, Ivan Ooze was say. from that, like, was that a Power Rangers fighting game? Or was that, that Power Rangers game. He had, like, this fireball he, the, that he could basically chip forever. He had flight. He could fly to the back. Uh, he could fly to the top corner of the screen, throw this tracking fireball that kept you locked down basically infinitely and chip you out. So shout outs to that guy. And I'll have to give special shout-outs to Vanilla Marvel 3's Phoenix, who was uh, nerfed yet again with, like, two pages of nerfs into one of the best characters in the game. But Vanilla Marvel 3 Phoenix was just absolutely out of control, and I, this is one you don't even have to explain. So I'll just say Vanilla Marvel 3 Phoenix. But with that, I think the panel's wrapped up. Hopefully we have Julio on cue right now to talk to him about his ECT victory uh, being sponsored by Echo Fox and a various amount of other things. Julio, are you there yet? Oh, you know what? Actually, in the meantime, we do have a video brought to you by Dot Esports. Sorry about this. That we're playing in, uh, before he comes on the show. Now, who are the worst three characters in Street Fighter V? The worst? Like this is post eight frames, or we're like talking before? We're talking about with every with, with, frame of lag currently in the game. With, with all eight. There's actually eight. Okay. The three Who's the worst? Zangief. Zangief. Zangief for sure. Zangief. Zangief. So you got Zangief, of course. <laughs> uh, you got Fang. Maybe Fang. Probably Fang. 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 That's interesting because Fang's been moving up a lot on some people's tier list, but you don't, you don't, you don't think it's real hype. He's good, but he's still one of the worst. Fang is uh, right above Zangief. I want to say Dalsim. I, I wanna agree with Dalsim. you. I want, I want to say Dalsim. Like it's getting really hard out there. So, so you don't have very high opinion of grapplers in this game overall, though, do you? Oh, definitely not. I feel like Alex is like, you know, probably like mid tier. Zangief is bottom, you know, garbage tier. <laughs> I think the newer characters, I would just say, are the worst right now because no one knows how to play them correctly right now. And then also, like, you're playing against people that kind of know their character really well now, and it's hard to like catch back up. The worst three characters in Street Fighter V are Birdie, Birdie, yeah. Fang. And uh, who are the DLC characters? No Zangief? No, Zangief is not bottom three. Okay, the DLC characters are Alex. Alex. Uh, Alex. Yeah. Wow, okay. Not, not harmed by Takia Sugi, uh, the Alex who just got second in the Capcom Pro Tour Online tournament? No, Alex is bottom three. Alex is bottom three. You heard it here first. All right, Julio, are you here right now with us? 
I, I'm, I'm right here. Do you hear me? I can hear you well and clear. Um, how do you feel coming off this ECT win? Uh, I, I feel really good. Just good. Um, what do you call it? Uh, I had to fight Chun. I felt good about beating <laughs> Chun. So it was uh, it was fun, man. I just took it one at a time, you know, just doing my thing, playing my game. So I'm very happy, very happy. So I believe this is the second time you've won a CPT event, and not only that, but the second time you've been reset on and then readapted to your character. Why is that? Why does that happen to me, dude? Like, <laughs> why do I have to get 3 0 and then reverse 3 0? I don't know. I don't know. So, you didn't get a phone call from Chris T this time. No. How no. did you come up with the adaptation? Uh, I noticed a lot of use of yeah. EX uh, Tatsu to beat Standing Light Kick uh, to, to win in the air, as well as a few other footsie adaptations. What did you do to come up with the strategy? Uh, I just decided that, like, he was basically walking me down to the corner all the time. So um, I thought it was important that maybe I, I just don't want to be there. And I'm, I'm like thinking like, wait a minute, when I had him, him in the corner in the past set, like in winner's finals, it went really, really, really well for me. So I'm just like, you know what? Uh, let me just try like turning up the aggression just a little bit. Let me just try some new run, uh, run mix ups and stuff. And um, you know, they kind of paid off. And as soon as I got, as soon as I got him, I, I put him in like the right corner and then I just started doing my thing. And, uh, and it turned out pretty well. So I just like, I upped the aggression a little bit, and I was a little bit smarter about everything overall. Played a little tighter, you know. When you go to losers, you just play a little tighter. You play better. So, so this is your second Pro Tour victory, but it's your first Pro Tour victory as a quote-unquote pro player. How does that feel finally getting to, you know, rep Echo Fox to the point where you've won a tournament? Oh, dude, it, um, it feels really cool. I'm like, yo, the sponsors are definitely going to be happy, you know, like, that's all I was thinking about. I was like, yeah, like I'm doing my job. That's what, that's what's uh, good. So overall, like I hope they were watching. I hope they see all the pictures of me winning or something. Like I, I'm, I'm very happy. You know, it's, it's good. It looks good on my record. And like I've been, I've been placing well overall too. So it's just, it's good for points. So um, it feels great, dude. It feels like uh, uh, I want to win some more, more majors. You mentioned placing well and doing well for your sponsors. Did you feel a lot of pressure after getting sponsored by, you know, something as big as Echo Fox with Rick Fox at the head to do well and, you know, really be one of the best Street Fighter V players more than you did before that? Yeah, um, the challenge and all that is, like, the challenge is to not think about it, of course. So, like, uh, um, that's what I have to do, like, every other day. I'm just like, yeah, just don't think about it, just play. And then the next day, tell yourself the same thing. Like, just don't think about it, just play. Next day, the same thing, same thing. Like, don't think about it, just play, just play. And uh, I don't know, I became really used to it. But um, it was like a, it was a good, like, transition period. You know, like, I, I didn't know what it really meant to be a pro player. But once, like, I had all that time open up, I had to, like, figure things out. I'm like, wait a minute, I have... I can fill up my schedule with stuff now. Like, what do I, what do I fill it up with? What do, how do I like optimize my training even more? But yeah, it was, um, it's cool. It's cool. Speaking of training, is someone playing in the background right now? I got my friends uh, training it up right here in the back. I got a really special guy that's coming out from retirement, training up in Street Fighter Five. So it's cool, you know. Who's that? Who's out of retirement? Can't say his identity is. You can't pan the camera just slightly and show right. us who the mystery man is. Right, dude, that's crazy. They're asking about you. <laughs> his last name is Tran. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you're from NorCal, you definitely know him. If you know, if you were in the CVS two scene, you would definitely know him. For Jimmy? sure. Jimmy? No, not not Jimmy, but Bronson? Jimmy will be over here soon. Nah. No. Uh, close, close. But you're, you're you're getting there, bro. You're definitely gonna guess. It. I've got. Uh, yeah. I'll well, give you a big hand. CVS two. I won't guess line. any further for his sake. But uh, so, how has that been? Yeah. I've heard that you've spent some time at the Echo Fox Gamer House. You spent some time at home. How is that aspect of being a pro player working out for you? And how do you feel? You know, training should go as someone that's playing Street Fighter Five partially for a living. Uh, yeah, dude, that's the thing. Like, as soon as I found out that they were offering me, like, a gaming house that I could stay at, I was, like, I instantly thought, like, okay, that's perfect. That, like, I could optimize my training now to, uh, to get even better. I could go to two regions. So, like, uh, that's what I do every, whenever I can. I'll, I'll travel down there, compete in the locals, you know, get, get some different experience. And then when I come back to NorCal, you know, everybody, it's like, it's like harvesting the crop. You let it grow a little bit. Everyone's got some new mix up So it's, like, it's constantly, uh, I'm constantly mixing up the training, you know, so I never get adjusted. That's what the goal is, and that's what that house in SoCal provides for me. It lets me, uh, it gives me a place to stay and a place to practice. 
and the people there are cool too. So it's it's in, and it's a really nice area too. So very blessed, very happy. It's cool. All right. Um, speaking of which, you mentioned as part of your victory that you had beaten Chun Li. Uh, obviously considered by a lot of people to be the best character in the game. Why is it so important for you to have beaten Chun Li in the grand finals? Oh yeah, cause uh, you know, I I never I'm like on and off with Chun Li. Like I do good against her, and then I do really bad, right? But like I always, regardless, I still feel like uh, confident against her for whatever reason. And uh, I just realized like she's been on a tear everywhere, and like the only thing I, I want to do is like prove everyone like nah, we like we can beat this bitch, you know? Like we can <laughs> we can take her down. Like you can play smart and and just not give her fierce any chance to like hit you and stuff like that so i wanted to really prove to myself that i could beat her um especially after ricky like 3 would me at a what do you call it summer jam so uh, i just wanted to uh defeat her so i was very motivated so on that note with i mean you beating chun li to win the tournament with uh john takauchi winning with rashid over chun li to win the tournament how do you feel about the balance of street fighter 5 whether you know picking a top tier is how you win or you can win without one how do you feel the game is right now and it's going to go in the future as far as tier lists go and whether they matter? Wait, wait, wait. So what's the question exactly? It's uh, what about the tier lists? Do tier lists, do tier lists in Street Fighter V really matter? Can we, can we beat Chun-Li? Is that oh. only happening now because it's early on? Well, or... it depends on – yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I, I get it. Uh, it depends on your perspective, you know? Um, you know, I think – the, the reason I like bad matchups, like, I, every time I think about fighting bad matchups, I kind of think about, like, uh, Snake Eyes, for example, right? Like, that dude, he he definitely went out of his way to, like, find the smallest of smallest nuances just to make his character work. And I feel like, to me, that's what makes Street Fighter really fun, you know? Like, where you become, where you're forced to go, like, engineer mode and find, like, the smallest, smallest of nuances just to, like, be able to fight a matchup. And, like, that that's exciting for me. That's what, like, I want to play for. So... You know, I, I look for the little, little tiniest nuances that I, I can get, I can against Chun Li, and I just want to apply it because I'm like, well, I did a lot of research, so it's very tiny, but it's gonna get me results in the end. So I, I like the challenge, you know. So I think, um, you know, tier lists, yeah, they matter, but if everyone's an engineer about it, and you guys are all, you know, finding the smallest things that make the biggest differences, I feel like they, they matter less. So high level matters a little less, I think. So, so how do you feel then about a potential patch after the Capcom Cup? Do you want one? Do you think the game need one? Would you like it just for yourself? How do you feel about that, you know, climate? Uh, I feel like uh, I wouldn't mind a patch. Actually, I would love a patch, like uh, a patch to just make everyone like the game more. Whatever that requires, like, I'd rather do that. Um, I'd, I'll play the game no matter what, you know, like, I'd rather just have the, the public like the game more. So maybe make it a little more flashy. Maybe, yeah, make Chun a little, nerf Chun a little bit, nerf Nash a little bit, nerf Ken a little bit, Ryu a little bit. I don't know. That's usually what Capcom does. They just nerf, and they nerf and they nerf, right? Usually when they go to the next iteration of Street Fighter. So I don't know. I wouldn't mind regardless, but yeah, I I, I hope they do whatever is right to make everyone happy. And it's funny because you've obviously come from a character that people wanted to nerf in Yoon in Street Fighter Four. Right. Um, yeah. Did you, did you mind Yoon getting nerfed on that note? Because obviously it seems like you care more about people liking the game than where your character is on the tier list or who's nerfed or what. How did you feel about A.E. Yun getting nerfed? Did you think he deserved it? Uh, dude, yeah, no, he definitely did deserve it. Like, uh, I won't lie. Like, he, he was very – he was too strong, bro. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 I agreed with the decisions that they made. But um, what I like – you know, that taught me a lot too. When, when I got hit with those truckload of nerfs, I was like, I have to really learn the game again in a whole new way. And, like, it did definitely made me a better player, you know? Like, Yun was now no longer cheap and easy to use. Um, but he was still S tier. And I feel like I discovered a lot of things to, you know, like, push him up the, the tier chart. So, um, it was a good nerf to him. He deserved it. But, man, by design, he's just too good. He's just really strong, you know? All right, so so with the second win, you are likely in, you know, more than just the hunt for the Capcom Cup. As someone who's had to prepare for open brackets, do you think you'll have to ramp up or change your preparation in any way for the Capcom Cup should you qualify? So, well, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, you went out a little bit. You literally went out. Oh, like, sorry. The question is basically how would you have to – change your training should you qualify for the Capcom Cup, which it's looking like you have a really, really good chance of doing at this point. 
Oh yeah, the training routine. You know, I don't. Man, like I, I feel like I already found like my rhythm for like my pace of training. So, uh, in in other words, like I, I feel like I've been taking into account Capcom Cup the entire year. So I feel like nothing's really gonna change for me. Like I'm just gonna continuously just keep trying to improve and continuously keep playing different people. Like I just feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like I've already started the the Capcom Cup training. So I don't think I'm gonna change much up. Maybe I'll I'll make a, a few more visits to to a variety of different players just to get some experience, but. I already have like a, a priority list of personal things I need to work on, so uh, I'm gonna be working on those all up, up until Capcom Cup, so I can have like really clean play and, and stuff like that. All right. And speaking of playing versus new players, if I if I believe right, I think you're going to Japan soon for Tokyo Game Show. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to Japan soon for TGS. I'm going for like two and a half weeks or so right now. So yeah. So do you have plans on playing with Japanese players outside of just the tournament? What's your strategy for making the most out of that visit? Oh, so I have a lot of things I want to do in Japan. Um, I want to, yeah, I want to train, of course. I'm definitely going to be training a lot. But I want to explore a little bit. But um, uh, definitely a lot of training. I'm going to go to the MOV house, you know, train with them a little a bit. I'm going to play with Tachikawa and Takeuchi a little bit. And then... Um, I'm just gonna travel around. I really, I really want to walk around Japan a lot. Like I want to walk for like five hours a day, maybe. You know, I, I have like a lot of energy. I've always wanted to go. It's always been a dream to go. So I'm gonna be walking everywhere and taking the trains wherever. And I don't mind getting lost a little bit because I have unlimited 4G there. I'm on that international T-Mobile plan, so it'll be good. You know, I'll just find my way around. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna make the most of it. You know, go to the fish market and train, basically. So, so it's interesting for me as uh, seeing someone who's a pro player for this game. How do you balance going to a new country and trying to do those exciting things with making sure that you know you try to win TGS and get as much practice as you can, or do you just prioritize going to the fish market? Oh wait, say that again. So like, what do I prioritize over what? Like, um... how, how do you make the most out of these visits? You know, as a pro player, you... you obviously feel like you're expected to win in some manner, but you also oh. want to have fun in Japan. Yeah, uh, you know, that's the thing I like about Echo Fox. They kind of understand that, like, I'm just kind of always learning. And, uh, it's you know, it's obviously, it's not really about winning, winning all the time. You know, I think of, it's good to be consistent. It's good to try, but, like, I really need to learn, you know. So I'll, I'll win when I have to, but um, for the most part, like, TGS is just an experience, you know. Like, I feel like there's the bigger picture, and this is just uh, uh, just the, the early phase of my entire Street Fighter career. So I'm just looking at... TGS is like a test, you know, it's just a test, it's a stepping stone, like, just to see, like, hey, where am I with the world, with these guys, with the Japanese, you know, so, uh, th th that's how I think about it, you know, I'll get the most of it, like I do every tournament, it's just a test. All right, and then, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to keep throwing out questions that, for sure, for sure. that I feel like intrigue people wanting to get inside the head of someone who's so good at this game. Oh, um, thanks, thanks. Do you ever play online? Yeah, dude, I go online. It's weird, like, I have to be in the mood for it. But um, I'll go online every now and then, you know? I got to Diamond, I took a break, I played a little bit, stuck to... I don't even know what rank I'm at. I'm like 15k or something, uh, somewhere around there. But uh, I, lo I do love online sometimes because it's good to just fight the, the the randomness, you know? It's good to fight, like, fight all the different styles because some people will do some crazy shit online. And it's good to just be prepared. You know, to to see if like, oh, can I handle some crazy mix-ups? Uh, let me go online and see if I can. And plus, you know, you got to use your imagination a little bit and uh, pretend it's Evo or something like that. It's like, how many wins continuously can you go and and play it super tournament-like, and and you'll get a good experience. That's how I like to play online. I just like to play with like super tournament mode. Like I take a, I value every little match, and uh, I take a, I take big breaks between matches to just make sure I never get into autopilot. You know, but I I definitely enjoy online every now and then. All right, I think that helps out a lot of people to hear that because obviously some people are discouraged by the fact they may only have online not as big of a you know local scene to play with. So I think it's mm -hmm. good for a lot of people to hear that you know a top player plays online. Um, yeah, it's it, good. It's very good. Is, is there anything else you could impart on to players who are perhaps I, – I think a lot of advice goes towards new players of the game, but not just new players but pretty good players already who are trying to win tournaments. Maybe they've made top 64, top 32, but have never reached the next level. Oh, yeah. Like, I got advice for those guys. Um, just just remember, like, you are evolving your your mind and your body. You have the capability to evolve. 
uh, evolving takes time, you know. So you can't you can't be mad at like not seeing results right away. So just remember, you gotta give it time. Like it's it's like working out. You know, you work out uh, four weeks. You can work out for every day for four weeks straight, but you'll barely see changes like a month later. You know, stuff like that. So uh, just just remember, keep trying and. and you know, be humbled and, and, and ask around, you know, because when people tell you information, it's it's really good. Like, I feel like you learn the most from conversation and discussion. So that's where you get, that's where I really level up against people. Like, just asking, like, how do you think when I'm, like, doing this to you? And they'll tell you what they think. They'll be like, oh, I, I, I'm always thinking, I'm thinking nothing. Or I'm thinking, oh, screw you, I'm going to do my EX. So just discuss with people, like, how they think. And it'll just give your brain idea, you know, uh, your brain ideas. So, like, when you wake up, you know, you're going to, just have an idea in your head and you're going to evolve and keep getting better. But patience, patience with your, you know, ev evolution as a player. All right. And uh, coming off of this tournament win ECT, how do you feel your chances are at Tokyo Game Show? And how do you feel America will do? Because obviously, you know, your Trinity brethren are going, a few yeah. other people are going. But I think a lot of people are worried that America might get bodied. Although maybe Daigo losing at ECT will change that. And how do you feel about winning a tournament with Daigo in it as well? Uh oh yeah well first of all like I think America will do great at TGS um I think Street Fighter Five is really like the most even playing field we've always had or ever had so um yeah I think uh, s several Americans sh are gonna be taking out some prominent Japanese players you know like uh you know Christie he took out uh Goichi and winners down in Puerto Rico so it's like it's absolutely possible and I see it happening at TGS um. And, and what was the second part of that question? Uh, How do you feel about you didn't get to play Daigo, but you won oh, right. a tournament with Daigo in it. it. It feels so weird, right? Like I, it's like I feel bad because like I, sh I should have been. Uh, I wanted to beat Daigo, you know. I wanted to win the tournament beating Daigo. That would have been great. But the uh, Lud and Ray Ray took him out for me, so like it's just the way it is. Um, it feels kind of funny. It's just like it's just gonna be a story to tell, you know. I'm just gonna be like, yo. Uh, yeah, that's my little plaque uh, when I won ECT. Daigo was there. Oh, what the hell? Daigo was there? Who beat Daigo? Oh, Lud and Ray Ray? Like, oh, what the fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's going to go down. But yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a story. You know, he, it's a story for sure. Did you have a Daigo prep plan going in? Were you excited to face him and had a strategy for Daigo specifically? Or? Well, oh yeah, like, uh, well, I played him at the team exhibition, right? And he, he messed me up real bad. Two, two wins straight, right? And then... I ran a first to five with him on Sunday during pools, uh, during top t uh, top 32. And you know, it was interesting because, like, you know, I, I, I took the first match. He made it 1-1. And then he, he at the final score, was basically 5-1. He beat me 5-1. It was bad. But I literally won a round every time. And I, I swear to you, a lot of the matches, like, two out of the five matches that he won were, like, 10%, 10%. So I was like, you know what? This is crazy. Like, I'm actually kind of hanging with this guy, but he's closing it out every time. But, um... One thing I realized about fighting Daigo is that he actually lets you play fireball game. And I was like kind of like surprised. I was like, dude, um what do you call it? Uh he's actually like not jumping at my stuff. He really I can actually play a ground game with this guy. That's kind of new. You know, usually against American players, you can't really do that. You know, they're going to jump eventually, so you're I'm always hesitant to play a real long fireball game, but it's like fighting him kind of he encourages it. So, uh it just gave me an interesting perspective. I was like, "Oh, okay, these these OG guys, they like to throw fireballs a lot, you know? And they, they want me to, to also. So it was cool. Good experience. But I, I definitely had a game plan. After that, I was like, okay, if I play you, Daigo, I'm definitely going to throw some fire, some fireballs, you know? And uh, try to get in your head. And then finally, does anything stand out of note that you would like to talk about? Anyone you'd like to thank? Any memories of ECT or hopes of Tokyo Game Show coming up that you'd like to talk about? Oh, uh, well... Just to give thanks, you know, I always give thanks to, to Arturo for la letting me stay with him at the tournament. So, so shout out to Art um, and Joe for hosting the tournament. But, um, I'm sorry, what was the second part of that question? Just anything you'd like to speak about before you go. Oh, anything? At, oh, like parting words, right? Parting uh, words. No, like, what do you call it? Uh, I'm just going to keep doing my thing. I hope you guys follow me. Like, uh, I'm always trying to evolve my Ken. I'm always training. I'm going to stream a lot more. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, well, just follow me on the stream because uh, I like the flow of information that comes through. And I'll teach you guys a lot of stuff. So that's Twitch TV slash Julio underscore the Ken. So come there if you want to learn some stuff. 
I'll be streaming in Japan too, so expect that. Uh, I'm gonna try my best to like get a monitor over there, borrow a monitor, and then stream from my PS4. You know, just some net play and stuff like that. So uh, that's pretty much it. Shout outs to my NorCal family, SoCal family. I go back and forth now. So, last question: Who is Campbell playing in Street Fighter V? Campbell. Is that a trick question? Who's Campbell playing? Yeah, isn't he right yeah. next to you right now? That's not Campbell. They think it's Campbell. There's no, more trans. No, 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 there's even more. There's more trans. I'll give you. I'll give you a letter for the. I'll give you a hint for the first letter. It starts with the letter D. Hey, you didn't have a. You didn't have a handle before, right? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Letter D. But you I'm, guys will find out. I'm not guys... OG enough. I tried yeah, to sneak no. one past you, but I'm not OG. The, the... This guy's mad good, dude. Like, I'm, I'm showing him the Street Fighter Five Ken stuff, and like, he's gonna like, you know, evolve, and he's gonna figure some stuff out. So I can't wait to see what he can teach me. So it's it's cool, you know. Grow your scene, teach, you know, get your friends back into Street Fighter, everyone. If All right. Have fun. Well, thank you, Julio, for the interview. I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, for sure. Everyone sure. should definitely watch this guy's streams. He's got a lot of uh, idea about what's going on in this game, obviously, and can definitely talk about that. So I yes. look forward to watching it. Dude, thank you, dude. Thank you for the support. <sighs> and that wraps it up for uh, our interview. Um, I'd like to impart a few parting words on stuff that Chun Li does. Uh, I think a lot of people don't understand some weakness of her, and that's why people think she's so strong. Uh, a couple small tips are that after her low jab, jab, low forward fireball, she's actually plus. So, you know, unlike the fact that her frame data says she's minus, if it's spaced correctly, she'll be plus, so don't mess with her after that. I see that happen a lot in tournaments. Uh, in V-Trigger, if she does TK legs, it's actually zero, not plus one. So if you have a three-frame jab, you can mess with that. And um, that's about it. I mean, she's a really, really good character. She's really tough for people to deal with. But that's been it for Best of Three so far. Uh, thanks to Julia for coming on the show, and thank you guys for watching.